On today's video, we're not going to be talking about gradients, big type, minimalism, any of that crap, because you can see those things on a million other videos. If that's what you're looking for, click away right now. What we will be talking about are major shifts in web designs that you need to understand. If you want to be a top player in the web design industry, you have to understand because that's what the clients really care about. That's what we're going to talk about. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, at the beginning of every year, there's always trending all these 2020 trends, visual trends, and I think this is so funny because all this stuff that people talk about are these kind of fashionable visual things that come and go every year and they don't really matter. I want to talk about things that are changing in the web design industry, things that you really need to understand because that's what clients really care about. That's what they will be asking you when you meet them to build a new website that's high end that they really for a business that really cares about their website. You need to understand these trends. Let's dive into them right now. First trend that you need to understand is GDPR. So actually, what is GDPR and why is it a trend? GDPR is actually a law that passed in Europe, in the European Union, actually in mid-2018. Basically, it's a lot about privacy, what kind of information you can collect or can collect. And even though that the law passed in the middle of 2018, during 2019, we have seen like a surge in how many people are adopting to this law. And basically, that means, again, what kind of analytics you can put, what kind of a script for the Facebook pixel, for anything, you have to deal with that. So that's why in most like every website that you see online today, you get immediately when you go in, you get this bar, this pop-up, please approve this, please accept our cookie policy. That's basically because if you don't do this and you have clients in the European Union, which is basically the whole world, um, you know, every business in the world might have a customer in the European Union. You have to be, um, you know, you have to stand in the kind of the, the you have to comply with these laws. Um, and so even, all, all American businesses are complying with that law. It kind of becomes the standard for privacy these days. Now, basically for you, you have to understand it's a very big and complicated law, but you have to know what it is. You have to know basically as a web designer what you have to do to protect your customers because every customer, every client now asks you, is my website okay? Are what we're doing is GDPR compliant? They, they want to know. Um, and you know, you're not a lawyer, but you have to give them the kind of the basic um, go around of what, is okay, what isn't okay. I actually think I have a video about the GDPR, but I just want to give you the, the kind of quick rundown. Basically, here's the tool that I use. This is called Cookie Script. This is basically a code that you put on the website for your clients and basically puts in this cookie pop-up script um, and actually a lot blocks all the other kind of like analytics and Facebook pixels and all the other code until somebody approves this. This is what I use. I can use it easily on whatever web, Webflow website or any other website. You can customize how it looks a little bit and basically it legally solves your issue. And as a web designer, it helps you solve your client's problem. So you have to know this. You don't have to use this specific solution. By the way, this is not, you know, uh, paid or sponsored or anything. I'm just showing you the tools that I'm using right now. And this is what I found best um, for GDPR, solving GDPR problems in the website that I build my clients. Next topic is accessibility. So I made a video recently about accessibility and this year in 2019, um, this is basically what happens. So Domino's were sued over by a blind person over their website not being accessible. This really drove accessibility into becoming kind of a mainstream. And again, this is something that in most country, I know I'm based in Israel, in Israel, it is the law. Your website has to be accessible by law. So if you are a web designer, you have to understand this trend. What does it mean for you? What does it mean for your clients? What are you allowed to do? How to design things for accessibility? Again, I, I do have a video about this. I do want to also recommend this tool, um, Accessibility, which is a tool that, first of all, these guys are my friends um, and they have a really good, successful company and a product. I've I actually used this product I'm a paying customer for my client's website. And so this basically helps you solve your accessibility issues. By the way, look at this website. It is completely against all, I would say, what you would see in the visual trends. It's like so much things going on, like gazillion call to action <laughs> buttons. And every time I talk to them, I was like, guys, you've got so much stuff going on on your homepage. And they're like, yeah, dude, but we've A-B tested this like a million times and this shit makes money. Uh, this, by the way, tells, and we'll talk about this in a second, that a lot of times think that you think as designers, 
manner. It's your gut feeling about whatever simplicity and colors. Check out these honestly ugly buttons. Get started now and then inverses a seven days risk-free trial. I mean, I think it looks horrible, but it just works. So you have to give it to them. Anyway, this tool, really helpful in making your website accessible. Learn about accessibility. Make sure that the website you design are accessible. Otherwise, you might be putting your clients at risk. Trend number three, and this is, uh, I started talking about this right now, conversions over beauty. So these days, clients are very much into the performance of their website. And I'm not talking performance, like how fast does it load, even though that matters as well. I'm talking about conversions. Do they reach their business goals using this website? And you have to understand this. You have to help them whatever, set up the analytics, understand the language of conversions, because this is really what they're going to talk about, you know, care about. And the discussion about, oh, we like blue, we don't like blue, uh, we like this visual, we don't like this visual, becomes a little bit irrelevant because it's very, very easy to test things out. And even though if you've managed to solve them, you had a big, amazing, creative idea because you saw this video about illustrations are trending. So let's put an illustration. You put in the illustration, then you watch the conversions go down because the website performs less because people, those specific customers are less engaged with this illustration. Then the illustration is a bad idea. No matter if you saw that it's trending in 2020, it doesn't work for this specific industry, audience, customers, whatever. So you have to be aware. You have to help your clients understand the conversions. And the, when you work with them long-term to, to understand that, maybe you had a great idea, maybe they had a great idea, you test it, you see really what works, and you work to build a website that converts, that helps them reach their business goals. At the end of the day, their website is a business tool for them. You have to make sure that it, it helps them achieve those business goals. Otherwise, you're just another pixel pusher, and we don't want you to be there. We want you to be a high-value consultant. We want your clients to trust you and pay you a lot of money. And for that, you really need to help them achieve their business goals. So understand how conversion works and take the, the discussion over there. Trend number four, funnels. And this is another elaboration into the, the discussion about how do web how do website converts. And you have to understand the concept of funnel. So the concept of funnel is, you know, a lot of people show up to your website or whatever. Some of them will click or give you your email. You'll send them stuff and at the bottom of the funnel, some people will buy. You have to understand the place of the website that you are designing in their sales funnel and how, and uh, and also I've managed, be, because a lot of times the building the website is part of building the funnel, the more that you can help out with building this funnel, the more value you bring to your customers. So if you know how to set up, you know, the, the uh, lead capture, which means that people fill in you know, the, the the email in the newsletter and then it syncs to their email service provider, whether it's, you know, HubSpot or MailChimp or whatever. And then there is an email automation and then they come back to the website to purchase. Once you understand how to build this whole funnel for them, and it's pretty basically, it's basically pretty easy to do these days because most of these co uh, tools are no code tools. I did I did a video recently explaining how my whole business, you know, from the the whole funnel from my business, my you know my education business works without code. You can understand these tools, you know, Zapier, Mailchimp, whatever, to help your clients set up the sales funnel, which again help them achieve their business results, help them drive conversion, help them make money, which in turn helps you make money because you're a valuable consultant. So understand how funnels work online. Trend number five is chats. You've probably seen this everywhere. Most interesting, I mean, I think the most popular one is intercom where you see it all around the web. You know, these these chats that are at the bottom right corner, you click there, you can chat. Sometimes it's a chat bot, automatic chat bot. Sometimes it's a live person that's going to help you with the sale. But this is, and there's many, many tools to do that. Actually, on my personal website, not personal, but on, on the website of Flux Life, if somebody, um, Flux Academy, sorry, if somebody's checking out one of our courses, they get a message from me and they can actually reply straight to using Facebook Messenger. So they will send directly to my Facebook Messenger. Um, so there are a lot of tools to set this up. It's usually as easy as dropping in a code um, into the website that you're building. But you have to understand this because again, this is something that's very important. It's trending in a sense that 
a lot, a lot of businesses understand the value of this. This helps drives conversions. This helps drive sales. Um, yeah, and and you should actually know, understand how to do this and what are the alternatives so you can offer that to the clients that you build websites for. Now, by the way, just want to mention if we're talking about the visual aspect, because I just went into the Intercom website to grab this screenshot. And I remember that Intercom had this really funny, funky hand, hand like something illustrations. And they've completely minimized it into kind of just like typographic value proposition. So I don't want to get into the visual trending, but you, I do see a shift from funky visuals into clear typography where the, the value is key, value proposition, clear value proposition. So copywriting, I didn't put this as a trend, but it's copywriting is an amazing skill to have more than ever before. Just note that. Last thing that I want to talk about is personalization. If you've watched my video about the website of the year, then you must understand that I like the fact that a, a website can, you know, have multiple facets, talk in different uh, tones of voice. But this, while this is nice to have an awesome kind of like, uh, I think, <laughs> cool, cool, whatever, nice to have something, uh, personalization specifically in e-commerce and a lot of websites um, is becoming very, very important. There's a lot of tools by this. This is a, an example of one of them, um, VWO. They're, that's a tool for doing um, A-B testing and then you can do website personalization based on them. So imagine somebody has been on your shop and they've watched something, they clicked on what, an, an image or they saw a specific ad. Now we're gonna get to the landing page. They're gonna be some, seeing something and getting a message that is, Di uh, directed at them, you know, if they're in a specific location, if they're a specific gender. Based on that data, we can give them a personal website that is talking direct to them. And it's not just like one website for everybody. I think this is a very important trend. You need to understand the tools that you can use to do this. Again, this is just one tool. There's Optimizely. There's also a tool from Adobe about that. Forgot the name of the tool from Adobe. But this is something that I think we're going to be seeing more and more and more in 2020. Um, there's a lot of data. People are coming from uh, places like Facebook ads where there's a lot of data about the person that's gonna hit the website. So you can personalize the experience for them. And we do know that when the experience is personalized, we're gonna see more conversions. So as you can see, most of the trends are how to help your clients make more money. And then Obviously, again, positions you as a person who can help them make money. You can charge a lot of money. Just want to show you here, zoom in here on the logo. Note what they have next to the logo, GDPR ready. Just to prove to you uh, that the GDPR thing is real, is true. Like every product that you want to use in the, the, your website or every tech company, that every product that they're using right now, the first question is, is it GDPR? Um, you know, is it GDPR compliant? Can we use this because we have to be GDPR compliant? All right, everybody. I hope this was useful for you. Um, remember, visuals, you know, making websites beautiful is important. And the core skills of design are always, those are kind of the basics. You need to have that down if you want to be a web designer. But if you want to reach the next level of high-end web design, you need to understand how to help your clients reach the, their business goals. And I think the topics that I covered today are going to be very, very me meaningful in 2020. Have an awesome year. I'll catch you on the next video.